Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another blessed opportunity to be able to come to you by way of this television medium in his name and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I want to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And of course, I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And again, this evening we're dealing with our Memphis lectures. Not too many more to go, but a few more, and then I'll probably be doing more work myself. But anyway, this evening, before we get to the speakers, let me just remind those of you who are who participate in the fourth Sunday singing. I want you to know that coming up in August, it's going to be at the Southside Church over in Richmond, and then September. It's going to be at the uh, Revere Avenue Congregation in San Francisco at the Bayview Church. And then uh, in October, it's going to be at the 13th Avenue Church of Christ uh, in East Oakland. So that's information so that you'll be able to go out and participate in the uh, fourth Sunday singing. Now, we again will be foregoing our prayer list uh, in our public service announcements. Again, I'm telling you, we're going to be getting back to that real soon. And we'll have a, a different way of doing it so you'll see the kind of things that God has been doing with me uh, during my hiatus from you while I've been presenting to you the Memphis Lectures. But before I actually introduce the speaker tonight, I want you to be mindful of the fact that there are a couple of bereaved families that I do want to acknowledge. And the first one being uh, the Ernest King family with the passing of Danny. So we are uh, praying on behalf of him and his family that they will be comforted during this time of their bereavement. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Gwen Murray, uh, who suffered the loss of her daughter here just recently. And I know she's going through it. She just lost her mother uh, a couple months back. So we're just encouraging you to hold on and keep the faith. And then we also want to ask a special prayer on behalf of Sister Ernestine Wooling. That's the wife of Brother Jack Wooling, who's the minister over there in Richmond. I talked to him on Saturday and he let me know that Sister Willing had been sick. So I told him to let her know that we'd be praying for her and we'd be adding her name to the prayer list. So those of you uh, in the viewing audience, please remember Sister Ernestine Wooling when you go to God in prayer. All right, so this evening we're going to be bringing to you Brother Corey Glover. And he's out of Hall Hallandale Beach, Florida. Now, let me say it again. It's Hallandale, H-A-L-L-E-N-D-A-L-E, -L -L -E -E, Hallandale, Florida. Or actually, it's Hallandale Beach, Florida. Make sure we get it all right. And he's going to be dealing with the subject of crawling, brawling, and shot calling. Bruise your head, bruise his heel coming from Genesis, the third chapter, verses 14 through 15, and Hebrews, the second chapter, verses 14 through 15. So without any further remarks, Brother Corey Glover. Thanks for knowing my ministry. Join me in the place where the scripture was assigned in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Uh, the preparation, uh, or rather the thing for the lecture is preparation for the next generation, old and new. Tried and true. Tonight's theme is the seeking to redeem and the plan to save man. My assigned topic is crawling, brawling, yeah. 
and shut it off. Now, I don't know whether or not to approach this as if I was Biggie Smalls or if I was supposed to rap. Uh, but I'm going to rap like they used to do in the old days. Uh, I'm not as old as I sound, but uh, I grew up around older people. And uh, back in the old days, rapping didn't mean you rhymed, it just meant you talked. I remember Isaac Hayes and a song that was called Guilty, and he had about a seven minute rap. Yeah, yeah. And he never rhymed. I told him, I ain't that old, and I'm not just talking about what I heard. And, and I remember him talking about John's girl. And, and uh, well, y'all really missing, y'all really missing too much. Let me get to the subject. So the Lord God said to the servant. Because you have done this, yeah. you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The other sign of scripture was from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, the manifestation of that promise. Well, the Hebrew writer wrote, Inasmuch yeah. then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brother, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. December 7th, 1941, then in city president, Theodore, or rather Franklin Delano Roosevelt, declared that that was a day that could go down in infamy. Yeah. Those of you who are aware of that from your American history studies understand that that was the day that the Japanese naval army launched a surprise attack in Pearl Harbor of Hawaii. History tells us some 2,000 400 naval officers lost their lives that day. Another 1,700 plus were wounded. Started off as a peaceful Sunday. And as I understand it, they tell us that not only was it a surprise because of the day, but the activity that was occurring at the time was that the Japanese and the U.S. had been discussing a peace treaty. Yeah. And so to the United States, this was a complete ambush. Yeah. It was a tragic event. But I want you to know tonight that although it took the United States another day on December 8th to declare war against Japan, when I look at the Bible some 6,000 years earlier, well. in the Garden of Eden, during a time of peace, as man is enjoying the luxurious, plush nature of God's garden. Yeah, yeah. Come on, son. And there was an ambush yeah. right, right. that took place in the Garden of Eden. Well, uh, Satan entered into a serpent, yeah. used his ground warfare, yeah. Yeah. those same bombs that he's using today called lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the subcutaneous use of these weapons caused the woman to look at something just a little bit differently than the way God had told her and the man to look at it. She looked at it and it looked good and she lusted for it and, and she utilized these weapons. Yeah. To destroy a man's paradise. I know that was talked about last night, so I don't have to deal with that. Uh, but when I look at verse number 14 and 15,
identity in Genesis chapter 3. I see something different about God than I saw about the United States of America. You see, the United States of America was surprised, but God was not surprised. Oh, for the Bible shares with me that before the foundation of the earth that the determining council had already made arrangements for this type of attack. Satan thought that it was a surprise attack that would destroy God's mission, God's purpose, and God's wisdom for man. But God had already prepared something for this particular event. And I'm so glad tonight that I don't serve a reactive God. I serve a proactive God. Because see, sometimes when you react, you mess up stuff. But it's always good when you are prepared before something actually happens. God had already prepared for this event. And so when Satan triggered this activity, all it did was put God's plan into motion. Some of y'all be here tonight. Because there are those who believe that God was reacting to what Satan did, but not so, because God in his infinite wisdom already knew what man would do before man did it. And since God already knew that, God had already prepared a vessel and a way for man to be redeemed. Yeah, surely. And so what we find is on the same day, God didn't have to wait another day. On the same day, God in our scriptural text declared war. Yeah. Against Satan. God said, You started it, but I'm going to end it. God said, It's going to be some problem. There's going to be some problem. And I'm going to start doing some shot call. He said, Now, first of all, you need to understand, Mr. Serpent. And I find this interesting because before he said, Is anything to the woman and the man about what's going to happen to them? He starts off with the main culprit. So he said, now say, serpent, you walk in, but you're going to crawl out of here. Yeah. And you walk in big and bad, and you thought you was going to start something with man. And you thought the war was between you and man. But you don't understand, when you pick on my creation, you pick on me. And I wish I had some Christians tonight who understand that when folk talk about you, don't get mad at the folk, because when they talk about you, you're God's child. And if you look out, uh, y'all don't be with me 
y'all don't mind, I like to teach a little bit. Come on. Uh, but if you look at how God designed this yeah. Yeah. statement, Show us. he says, first of all, don't get it twisted. You will be defeated. Uh, let me come over here with some four bats of faith. Because see, some of us can't be devil, and we don't need to be scared of the devil. Uh, he said, now, first of all, said, you will be defeated. Yes, sir. Because, see, her seed is going to bruise your head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the word bruise carries with the idea of utter destruction. Uh, when he crushes your head, yeah. there will be no more power yeah. for Satan. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all going to be with me? Go ahead, sir. Now, now, you might win some battles because you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't uh, body's healed every now and then. Talk, sir. You might win a few battles, but the war is already won. Yeah, already fixed. And the church needs to know tonight, yes, Satan might rise his ugly head up every day. Reminded me of a song, old song. The story, y'all heard that story before, uh, where a man took in a snake, weather was cold. Yeah, yeah. The snake couldn't survive in the cold. The man picked the snake up. Only tell the story. Covered him up, warmed him up, nursed him back to health. Tell the story. Fed the snake. Went there one day, put his hand out in the place where the snake was, and the snake bit him. Yeah. And he said, now, Mr. Snake, uh, I picked you up yeah. off the side of the road. Yeah. I nursed you back to him. Yeah. And now I came in here to pet you, and, and you bit me. Yeah. And the snake looked at him, and he said, well, man, why are you surprised? Yeah. You know I was a snake, and you picked me up. Yeah. I said, y'all get that tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, uh, don't trust the snake. Because if you trust the snake, it's a big mistake. Messing up our peace, destroying our unity, 
and we need to take back our elevation in Christ Jesus, take back our kinship, take back our fellowship, and some of us in the Lord's church need to take back our pride. Awesome. Needs to be proud to say, yes, I'm a member of the church of Christ. Now we like to say, well, I'm a member. What church do you go to? What church do you go to? I got to say it, man. I know what you're talking about. I grew around here. Yes, Lord. And we used to be proud to knock on somebody's door. Tell them what church to go to. We got some folk that ain't quite literary. And depending on what neighborhood we in, we might get an answer that we don't want to receive. But again, that's not in the lesson. Uh, the fight is on church. And God has declared war against sin. Yes. And by doing so, this is perhaps one of the most important declarations that God made in the Old Testament. And he made it right from the start. The devil is not your friend. Now, elementary as that sounds, I just need to say that in some way before I run out of time. Satan is not your friend. And Satan has a way of making it seem like he's on your side. Just like those Japanese who were supposedly negotiating a treaty, Satan wants us to negotiate a treaty, but really, he's just trying to soften us up for his weapon. Talk yeah. yeah. Sister, they shouldn't talk about you like that. They shouldn't treat you that way. If I was you, I'd just cuss them out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. I've heard that. This is a little taller so I can hide. Brother, you know you can preach better than that preacher. You should be up there instead of him. And then when the brother comes to shake your hand, you can't even shake your hand because Satan has already loosened the poison into your ear. Some of those preachers in here dealing with folk who want to be in the same pulpit that you're in. And instead of you trying to bless folk, you got to fight for all for what God has delivered for you. Which had a church in you. See, the reason why it's, it looks easy is because your preacher is gifted. Yeah. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Yeah. I watch basketball, and I tell you what, those guys make it look easy. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Russell Westbrook makes it look like, oh, I'm in Memphis. Let me, let me call somebody from <laughs> Memphis. Like Tony. Yeah, right. oh, He's a professional. Yeah. And I need you to understand that, that the minister that you have, you ought to be thankful for him. This ain't that. That's not some of y'all are somewhere. You need to be thankful for him that he makes it look easy. That man has a tough job, and somebody out there wants to be what God has put in him. And you need to stop listening to state talk and let God do who he will. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. brother say one day, man, I got I got a lesson on my heart. Say, God, that's probably where you need to stay. Mind before all this 
that's even happening. Yeah. That Satan, what you don't realize is all you did was set in motion my scheme of redemption. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Y'all gonna be here? Yeah. Uh, you might feel as if you have won a significant battle, but all you did Talk, was start the chain of events that is going to result in your demise. Yes. Oh, that is good stuff now. God's manifestation of his declaration. Say this in Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And we have seen him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded. Wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised, sir. For our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes. Oh, yeah. By his stripes. Every time Satan struck him, tempted him, yeah. put a crown of thorns on his head, yeah. each and every nail, Satan is striking him, he's fusing him, every single drop of blood, he's bruised, he's bloody, but thank God he's not beaten, he's down, but thank God he's not defeated, yeah. he took Satan's demonic Some of y'all wrestling fans, y'all know what I'm talking about with a handicap match. Yeah, yeah. It was one against three. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. The people's champion. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I said Jesus, the people's champion. Yeah. 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 And in the other corner, you got Satan. Uh huh. You got death. Yeah. Yeah. And you got the Hadean world. Yeah. Satan, death, and the Hadean world uh -huh. look to be undefeated. Yeah. They look to be unconquerable. Uh -huh. yeah. But Jesus, the people's champion. Yeah. Is in the other court. Oh, yeah. And the thing about the people's champion is that he was rejected of the same people that he was championing. Uh -huh. But thank God for his love, for his grace, and for his mercy. And y'all know the story. The devil did his part, delivered him into the hands of wicked men, sinful men. They spat on him. Yeah. Bless the Lord. They ridiculed him. Bless the Lord.
to crush yeah, the devil. Right. I'm giving you a story on my own time. Appreciate your patience. Uh, Bless you, Listen, I don't mind the story of a man who was collecting bottles on the side of the road. Those of you, particularly those of you who like to live in Michigan, yeah. you know they have those bottles that you can return. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Get a 10 cent deposit. That's right. Yeah. I was in Michigan for a few months. Bless the Lord. There's yeah. some people up there. You can't say somebody here from Michigan. <laughs> that doesn't matter. It's just not But they, they had a recycling plant. And if you were bringing the bottles back, they'd be a 10 cent. That's right. Man is collecting all of these bottles. Yeah. Young man walked by and said, Sir, why are you collecting those bottles, huh? They ain't no good. And they empty. Yeah. The contents are not worth anything. Yeah. Oh, so you're so And the man right. said, well, what you gotta understand, son, yeah. is that they're no more good to the consumer. Well, it's all, son. But they're still good to the manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Boy, they quite understand. Oh, yeah. Right. You wouldn't have saw it. <laughs> Just follow the man. So he started helping the man. Yeah. Yeah. He started putting some bottles in there. He noticed, he said, well, sir, why don't you at least use some gloves? Because some of these bottles are dirty. Uh -huh. They're filthy. People's lips yeah. have been on these oh, bottles. And, and you're getting them out of dirty, empty fields. And, yeah. and the man said, that, that, that's, all right. I, that's all right. I really don't have a, a place to lay my head or a place to really wash my hands. But uh, I'd rather go ahead and return these bottles than the bin uh -huh. for money. Mm -hmm. And then the man went up to the store. He went up to the counter. And he returned all the bottles. And the young man saw all of the money. That the old man was seeing. Well, well. And he said, Wow, I can't believe all those empty, no good bottles yeah. were worth something. Oh, and he said, Son, remember what I told you? They're no longer good to the consumer, yeah, yeah. but they're still good to the manufacturer. Yeah, yeah. And I want to turn to them on this tonight. Even one of those empty bottles. Yeah. Some of us strong off on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. Some of us fly out good for nothing if yeah. you really are honest with ourselves. Some of us just went for bad because we just grew up in that kind of neighborhood. Yeah. We got sophisticated now because we got a little bit of education. Uh -huh. uh, but you catch our time wrong when we'll tell you, don't let me go back to who I used to be. Bless the Lord. But thank God for Jesus. Yeah. 